When a Proctor compaction test has been performed, the data is plotted resulting in a curve. This curve, known as the Proctor curve, represents the plot of dry unit weight versus water content. Soil, as shown in this phase diagram, is comprised of three components, air, water, and solids. For our purposes, the air will not be considered because it has essentially no weight. Dry unit weight is used because the weight of the water is variable. Water content is the ratio of water weight to the dry soil weight in percent. In this sample, the weight of the water is the same as the weight of the soil, resulting in a water content of 100 percent. The significance of the water content can be illustrated by studying the Proctor curve. We see that the curve has a peak. This represents the maximum unit weight that can be obtained under the standard laboratory compaction effort. As water is added to the dry soil, the density of the soil rises to the point where compaction becomes most efficient. If too much water is added, air is trapped in the soil and the dry unit weight falls off. The purpose of the standard Proctor compaction test is to find the optimum water content of the soil, the point where maximum density is achieved and compaction produces the best possible results. This is the equipment needed for the standard Proctor compaction test. The compaction mold is 4 inches in diameter and contains 1 30th of a cubic foot, making the mold 4.6 inches high. The mold has a collar which keeps the soil from spilling over the top. A steel straight edge is used to strike the mold, ensuring the soil is exactly 1 30th of a cubic foot. This is a standard compaction hammer. It weighs 5.5 pounds and when extended and released, it falls 12 inches. Aluminum cans are for holding the samples as the water content is measured, and of course a scale is needed for weighing the soil samples themselves. An oven is required to dry the water content samples. They will be weighed dry and compared to the weight when moist. This comparison is the basis for the Proctor curve. Finally, you will need a number four sieve. With four wires per inch in each direction, this sieve will pass particles about 0.2 inches in diameter. Using particles larger than this will make it very difficult to smooth the top of the compaction mold. Now that we have assembled the proper equipment, let's begin the test. The soil must be passed through the number four sieve. You will need approximately six pounds of soil to complete the test. With the large particles removed by the sieve, you can now add some water to the soil. The amount of water needed depends on the soil type. Sands require less water than clay. Try to determine which type of soil you are dealing with before adding any water. About 5% water is right for most soils to begin the test. Now we weigh the mold. The empty weight or tear weight will be subtracted from the total weight of the soil, water, and mold later in the test. Now fill the mold about halfway with loose soil. The soil is compacted in the mold in three layers. Always compact the soil on a solid surface. Set the mold on the floor and drop the hammer 25 times. After the first layer is compacted, refill the mold with two and a half inches of loose soil and strike another 25 blows with the hammer. This process must be completed three times. The resulting sample will be uniformly compacted in three layers and should be slightly higher than the top of the mold. After final compaction, remove the collar from the mold 
and trim the soil level with the top using the steel straight edge. The soil remaining will be exactly one thirtieth of a cubic foot. Now weigh the moist compacted soil and mold. By subtracting the empty mold weight or tear weight, we can find the weight of the compacted soil and water. Next, remove the compacted soil sample from the mold. After removal, slice or break off a small portion of the sample and place it in one of the aluminum cans. This portion of the sample will be used to determine the moisture content of the compacted sample. Carefully weigh the portion and place it in the drying oven. Now let's review what we have done so far. Water was mixed into the prepared, dried soil and compacted into a mold of specific size. The molded soil was then carefully weighed, giving us a unit weight measurement. Then a portion of the sample was selected and weighed, dried, and now will be weighed again to find the moisture content. The difference between the two weights is the water weight. The resulting data point is the first step in establishing the Proctor curve. To get additional points needed, we essentially repeat the previous test, reusing the compacted soil sample. Break the sample up and add more water, usually about two or three percent more. Mix the water and soil well. Now compact the soil in three layers, just like before. It is very important to use exactly the same procedure, filling the mold about halfway with loose soil and striking the soil with the hammer 25 times for each compaction. After compacting, use the straight edge to strike the face of the mold, weigh the sample, subtract the weight of the mold, and then remove the compacted soil and water. This new sample will have a slightly higher density it will be heavier. Remove a portion of the sample, weigh it, and place it in the oven along with the first portion. Be sure to keep accurate records of each weight and mark the cans according to their order of testing. The entire process should be continued five or six times. It is important to have at least two points on either side of the maximum unit weight on the compaction curve. At some point in the test, the moisture content will exceed the dry unit weight and the curve will begin to fall off. The resulting points will plot in a curve with the area at the top of that curve being the optimum water content, the point to where the soil achieves maximum density under compaction. The Proctor compaction test was developed in 1933. In the 1950s and 60s, bigger and heavier field compaction equipment was developed. The resulting compacting effort on the soils was often greater than the standard Proctor compaction. This resulted in soils being overcompacted. Overcompacted soils have a parallel orientated structure and are weak. To make the standard test more in line with the newer, heavier equipment, a modified Proctor test was developed. This test uses a 10 pound hammer instead of the 5.5 pound standard and is dropped from a height of 18 inches instead of the previous 12 inches. And in addition, the soil sample is compacted in five layers. The modified Proctor compaction test results in a higher maximum unit weight and a lower optimum moisture content.